Hello, Quinn here. Yes, I know, I've been going by QueenieQ and my channel just changed its name as well. Uh, I decided to make a practical business move and change the name of my channel to Hello Queenie um, because I love Halloween and I pretty much celebrate it 365 days out of the year. And my name is Quinn. I feel like it's going to be much easier if I just use my own name from now on. There's actually like a lot of uh, YouTube creators who go by QueenieQ, who would have known. Um, I didn't do my research. So, <laughs> call me Quinn. You can call me Queenie. I also like that as well. But yeah, my channel name is now Hello Queenie. Anyway, down to business. Halloween is only a couple days away and I haven't started my Halloween costume yet because that's pretty usual for me. I, um, you know, several months out of the year prior to October, I think of like probably about 20 or so different Halloween costumes and I usually narrow it down between two or three by October. I decided that I feel more comfortable in my sewing skills, at least comfortable enough now to try to do Edith Cushing's nightgown and wrapper from Guillermo del Toro's Crimson Peak. <laughs> I love that movie. Uh, it's one of the first scary movies I really saw back when it came out. I saw it in theaters. I watched a lot of like Halloween movies growing up, but not like horror. I am very squeamish and easily scared. I've been working myself up to more horror movies. Like Aaron and I have watched a lot of horror this October, actually. And um, <laughs> I'm raising my tolerance. Anyway, I love all of Edith's costumes. I've always wanted to make them <laughs> in general, most of them. There's a couple that I'm like, eh. But uh, her nightgown and her wrapper are just so good. It gets the two chef hands. So good. I, I've loved it. And I somehow snagged a pattern. I guess McCall's did a pattern for it. Um, around the same time that it came out, maybe like a year later. I'm very excited to get this done. I'm a little worried that I won't be able to finish all of it. That's usually, I usually end up sewing on the day of Halloween, which I would like to avoid <laughs> this year, but I also waited till like the last week to start my costume. I ordered the fabric in time. That came like two or three weeks ago and I washed it and prepped it, but, um, uh, it took too long editing that one candy corn witch video uh, <laughs> and um, didn't start the sewing project instead so yay yay i'm doing this also partially because i wanted to participate in the halloween historical halloween 2020 costume thing that's going around through all the costumers yes i still like doing fashion history and sewing historical clothing just because I've been doing a lot of goth content doesn't mean I don't like that stuff still. Um, <laughs> I do want to work on my ability to blend these aesthetics together, so to speak, and have my like love of goth and macabre and my love of <laughs> Victorian dressing history and earlier. I, I really love late 18th century to early. 20th century. Anyway, uh, uh, let's let's get to it. Okay, so I have my materials and I have my pattern, which I'll show you in a second. Um, the only thing is, is there's like five days left until Halloween. So. Tonight I need to cut out everything and it's going to take forever because if you've ever cut out a large or like a, a gown, if you've ever cut out a gown, you know that a lot of yardage in one pattern piece takes forever to pin and cut. I also kind of cheated and didn't film this but I tea stained the fabric for the nightgown because I wanted to take care of that when I was tea staining my orange fabric for my Candy Corn Witch video. If you haven't checked that out, description, there's a link down there in the description. Go watch that. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to cut everything out tonight. Again, these are two large pieces of clothing. Um, so the main goal is to really just get 
the gown done. <laughs> That's the main goal, because I need to be able to wear something. The wrapper doesn't have to be ready for Halloween. I want it to be, but it doesn't have to be, because this is something that I already want to cosplay as year round. Here we go. Here is my McCall's cosplay pattern. And they call it Spectral, because obviously they didn't get the rights to Guillermo del Toro's movie. I want to say this pattern came out the same year, so probably 2015-ish. Maybe 2016. 2016, here we go. 2016, it's in there, I swear. But they show you the nightgown and then the wrapper. And those are those. They don't have it, obviously, in the colors from the movie. They have it in something they won't get in trouble with. Also, I think that might actually be um, Yaya Han's fabric that they use for that uh, robe. I think she's the one who does the ones with um, the calls. So that would make sense. But this isn't actually screen accurate uh, at all, really. <laughs> well, okay, that's a lie. So this isn't super screen accurate, so I might play around with it a little bit to make it a little bit more screen accurate, um, just for my own enjoyment. <laughs> Here's the tea stained gauze. I think I got like a crinkle voile from fabric.com. And of course it's already wrinkly, but oh well. Her nightgown's supposed to be super wrinkly anyway. So uh, I couldn't figure out how to do the pleating process, so I opted for this crinkle voile until I can learn how to do that very tiny pleat that they do for her costume. I'll wear my, my slip underneath my skin colored slip so that you can't see my body. And hers actually in the movie is pretty see-through, so I'm not too worried about that. Oh, this is what I got for the wrapper. This is the closest thing I could get. Let me zoom in out a little bit. Closest thing I could get to um, what they have on screen. That silk was gorgeous. I want to say they hand embroidered it or hand painted it or something. So obviously I wouldn't be able to get something really close unless I saw that piece in person and took photos and then recreated it myself. But this will do for now. Uh, and I got, you know, like seven yards of it because that's what this pattern needs. It's insane. And then lining, of course I had to have lining um, because with a highly frayable fabric like that, I need to do some things to make the seams not fray everywhere. And, you know, who doesn't like a nice lining? I want this to be a mostly functional, a mostly functional cosplay slash Halloween costume. So I want to actually be able to wear this comfortably. So that's the lining. And then this is for those little those little silky bow bits that she has on there. So this is for that. It's like a little poly satin. Again, this is what I could do. <laughs> it's what I could afford. So um, yeah, unfortunately I can't afford actual silk. Okay, let's get to cutting out my, my nightgown. So I've cut out all of the nightgown. Now I'm like, it's late. I'm trying to decide if I should cut out the robe or wait until I've actually finished sewing all of the nightgown before I even touch the robe. Like it's not an impossible task. Like out of all of the things I could have chosen to make, these aren't like the most intense patterns. Like it's not incredibly fitted, so that makes it super easy as far as just sewing it together and not worrying about it. Whereas like if I was making a corset or a Victorian bodice of like the 1890s or earlier or you know, even later, I would have to do a lot of fitting and that takes a lot of time. I mean, just cutting it out took a bunch of time. So, and that's again, only the nightgown, but this fabric has been very fiddly. It's driving me crazy. I hate <laughs> cutting this fabric. It's awful. I also somehow have lost my um, neckband piece for the pattern. So I just cut out some strips. I needed to make it wider anyways. Or um, yeah, I needed to make the neckband piece wider anyways because the way they have it is much smaller and there's like a little bit of ruffle. But the way hers is in the movie, it's like very wide and the ruffle like comes out over the top. 
I, I guess we'll see. <laughs> Maybe I'll cut out, no. Yeah, I think tomorrow I'll do more cutting and sewing. Here I'm just sewing together the ruffle pieces for the yoke and the collar of the nightgown. I will be also gathering down these as well to make it easier to make them very roughly. And then I just French seam the shoulder seams for the yoke. And then I also French seam the sleeves and gather the edges on those as well. Here I am sewing and French seaming the long side seams of the nightgown itself. And for the collar, I, uh, sorry I didn't film this, but basically I make a little sandwich with the collar pieces interfacing and ruffle, and then sew them together. Trying it on is of course very important. Now I'm just pinning the right sides together in order to sew along the edge, leaving the inside of the collar piece free so that I can whip stitch that down over the raw edge of the neck. Gathering the ruffles for the yoke and then pinning them in place to stitch them down. Here are the ruffles on the yoke. I just need to trim this edge right here. now it's ready to be pinned to the long nightgown pieces. Here I am carefully sewing the yoke and the nightgown together. And of course trying on is very important as well. It's starting to look pretty good I think. Here I'm just pinning on the puff sleeves after I gathered them. And stitching those down carefully as well. Here I am just uh, whip stitching that collar down like I said I would. And making the buttonholes for the collar as well. The nightgown is done. I did finish it in time. So now the question is, should I start making the gown, the wrapper, or should I just be happy that I finished something? I think I might try to cut out the wrapper tonight and then see what I can do about sewing the wrapper maybe in the next two days, two or three days. I still have to actually style the wig too. That's the other fun bit. Okay, we'll see what I do. We'll see if I um, if I cut out the wrapper tonight. I need to eat some food and edit my video that should be going up tomorrow. <sighs> Just sewing the lining together, also doing a French seam on all the edges. Okay, so I was a little concerned with the um, brocade fabric and it French seaming and not being too bulky, but I'm actually not too upset with my little tester piece here. So I am excited. I was worried I wasn't going to be able to French seam this, which would mean I would need to have to figure out something else. It is poly, so I could have probably just singed all the edges, but that's a lot of work. 
Not to say that, you know, French seeming huge gown pieces is a lot of work, but it is. So now that I've done my test, now I know I can start getting to work. Um, I wanted to put pockets in it because obviously I need pockets. So I'm a little concerned also because I don't really know how to French seam with pockets. I've tried to do it a couple times and it just turns out really weird. So I'll probably watch something on how to do that. It's not too bad. It's all, I mean, again, it's all just long seams that take forever because I'm French seaming because I chose very frayable fabrics. But it's looking good. Worst comes to worst, my dress is already done. So, you know, if I get too frustrated, I can just walk away <laughs> and just wear that. I think I'm actually going to stop for tonight. I may look at making the little streamer pieces because uh, I might be able to get those done. We will see. I'm having like this weird tension issue with my thread and I'm really too lazy to change it. But basically I'm using this thread from my Ikea because it was nice and cheap and a distinct color that I don't have. But I always have really weird tension issues with it. And I'm not like enough of a experienced seamstress to know what to do about it or to even want to try to look it up. So we'll see what happens there. Here I'm preparing all of the accent ribbon pieces to be sewn together. This stuff um, really did not enjoy my machine. I was using a really small needle, but it was still making it pucker and breaking the threads in that weird way that it can sometimes do. French seaming also the brocade fabric. Here I have a similar method to my pockets from my candy corn witch uh, video. The only thing here is that I'm French seaming them, so I sew on the pockets as normal, but then sew the wrong sides together first, and then I have to trim that and then flip it inside out and sew the right sides together. And here I am just sewing down that pocket seam. And here I'm just trimming it so I can sew it right sides together. You can see it's very fiddly to French seam with a pocket. And here I'm just French seaming the shoulder seams of the gown itself as well. Okay, hold on. My glasses are disgusting. I can't see out of them. Okay, so it is currently Friday, the day before Halloween. As predicted, as I'm sure I've said multiple times, uh, still not done with my costume. Um, but you know, at least I'm doing it correctly and, you know, French seaming all of these seams because this stuff frays like nothing else. <sighs> Look at all that fraying. Also, um, when I made the pockets, I did not account for uh, how much would be eaten up in seam allowance from French seaming. So they're like only big enough for like my hand and that's when I squish my hand into puppet mode, not like full flat hand. So my phone won't be able to go in here at all. Maybe I could fit in some lipstick, but that's about it. Oh well, <laughs> I probably could fix that or make just an exterior pocket or something. But I'm kind of at this weird point um, where like they want me to put on little like decorative flippy bits before I do the lining, but honestly I'd rather just hand tack those down after I do the lining and flip it inside out because I really kind of hate how this is turning out. And it's just like super wonky inside the French seamed shoulder. So 
I'm probably gonna unpick that and take that out. We'll see. Maybe I'll just eat it up a little bit more. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm like at the quitting point, to be honest. And it's it's funny because there's not that much to be done left. I've done a lot of it already. Um, so, so I'm gonna make myself finish it. Today at least I'm not starting at like seven o'clock like I have been the last couple days. I keep like procrastinating and then not starting until evening. So at least I'm starting with some sunlight out. Um, but I, you know what? I'm optimistic. I'm gonna. I'm optimistic. Even though I started off with a migraine today, I've been going to bed at like 3 a.m. every night, waking up at like noon. <laughs> I'm optimistic that I will get this done. Even if I have to sew so on Halloween, whatever, it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time I had to do that. Um, not ideal, but you know, again, uh, be nice to myself because it's the pandemic. Let's get back to it. Ah, I popped both my elbows. Turn around, I'm running out of thread up top, but that's okay because we could always put more in. <laughs> I mean, I won't, I won't. I wound my bobbins. I w winded, wounded, wound. I wound my bobbins, so there's a lot of bottom thread. Not so much at the top thread anymore. That's okay. We can get more. I guess. I have other colors, <laughs> as we know. I'm not shy of using random colors of thread, so. <sighs> Here I'm gathering the lining and the regular fashion sleeves for the robe and the robe lining. And then pinning those two together on their respective pieces before stitching them together. Here I'm sewing the neckband piece onto the lining. And then here uh, you can see that I'm pinning together the lining to the fashion fabric and then trimming all those edges after I've sewn around them. This took kind of forever to sew around and also to trim, but you know, well worth it. And then turning everything right sides out. It's looking pretty dang good if you ask me at this point. Now I just need to do a little top stitch around the edge. So back from a dinner break and um, before then I just finished top stitching around the edge of the turned right side out wrapper. Now all I have left to do is to sew the sleeve lining to the fashion fabric sleeve and somehow finagle that because it's kind of in a weird shape. They didn't necessarily want me to do the bag lining the way I did it so I'm gonna have to figure that out and then I just need to sew on the little like satin ribbony bits that go on it as well. Normally they asked me to do that before so yeah so it's not that much left to do. It's like eight or nine, eight, yeah, it's basically nine, it's 8.57, night before Halloween. It will be pretty close to being done here. Exciting stuff. I think this might be the first time that my costume's actually done before Halloween the day. <laughs> we'll see, I still have to style the wig. I might cop out and not style it, we'll find out. <laughs> and here I'm just sewing on those fiddly bits to the front with a good old needle and thread, this time not bending my neck as severely in that previous and sewing footage of me. You can see I'm also covered in threads. This stuff sheds like nothing else. And then here I'm also whip stitching the cuffs for the sleeves and then it's all done. Maybe she's bored with it. Maybe it's Amazon. I, uh, I bought this beautiful wig. And um, I understand now why all of the reviews were for the Merida wig. Merida, because it was like the red ginger wig. This thing is voluminous. I mean, I don't hate it. 
I have always wanted to have crazy long hair and my hair is naturally curly. I also feel kind of like the Beast and also like an 80s hair metal band member. So yeah, I need a stylist obviously. It's not styled the way I need to style it. So I need to figure out how the hell I'm doing that. Um, I have a, a head form. I think what I need to do is just brush this thing out to hell and then see what to go through from there. <laughs> Let's set that up. Wow, this wig though is still very fluffy and curly. Um, I don't really know how to style wigs and I also did not bother to look up how to do it due to time constraints. But I'm still pretty happy with this crazy wig. Um, it's much fluffier I think than Edith's hair actually, but I still like it. I think this might be my favorite like thing I've ever made, definitely my favorite cosplay I've ever made. But might be one of my favorite things I've ever sewed myself. Definitely my favorite costume for Halloween I've ever sewed for myself. Like, oh my god. I don't, I mean, I'm just so pumped. <laughs> Obviously I didn't put any stiffening in the sleeves. Sorry, I'm checking myself out in the mirror <laughs> on the wall back there. Um, but honestly I didn't think it really needed it. This upholstery, like brocade, jacquard, whatever is uh, already pretty stiff. Now what did need some interfacing and or an 1890s sleeve bustle or the sleeves. Let me show you. They definitely are very sad um, but I intentionally was lazy about that because of a couple reasons. You can tell the shoulder seemed a little weird too. I left the shoulders the way they are. This is my excuse because when I make myself a new Edith nightgown, I'm gonna use this one and like put the, the blood on it and get it all messy and nasty. And the costume designer has said that Edith's sleeves change depending on her mood, like in her emotion. Like when she's sad, they're very deflated. When she's very happy, they're much more butterfly-esque. So I'm leaving them as they are. It's really just that I'm lazy. No other reason. But uh, yeah, I freaking love this thing. I have to wear a slip underneath it, obviously, because it's very see-through. But it's very cute. Ooh, the other thing is I made, made the neck piece very large. <laughs> and um, I have to like safety pin it to be much more flush. I don't know if you can see that, much more flush with my neck. Um, and be much tighter. Again, that's something I can fix later on I suppose and you know just other trimming things I left a lot of my edges raw on purpose to I mean the one in the movie already kind of looks like that as well uh, although it might have really tiny rolled hems I don't remember there's just kind of a raggediness to the one in the movie so I left these edges raw on it as well I have these sleeves rolled up because they're like weirdly long and um, something else I probably should either just finish or trim so like they make that cute like I don't know what to call that. The cute romantic guafy hand thing. <sighs> but um, it doesn't look right when you have the robe on because it's like, whoa, <laughs> why is her her gown sleeve somewhat shorter? I'll show you. Uh, this could just be from the way I like hems these weird, but ugh. Ugh, 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 ugh. okay, sorry. I don't like hair in my mouth, it would hair in my mouth was even weirder. So, you can see where the robe naturally sits. It makes it look super weird. So I just kind of tuck that shit back in. Also, uh, when it comes to screen accuracy, the robe, the way that the sleeves are, 
not close to the movie. The movie has like this kind of, uh, it's got a different cuff going on basically. I don't know how to describe it, but it's got like a separate cuff that's sewn on to the robe rather than these weird like little easy pointy things. And I believe the sleeves are a lot more fitted, but that's, that's on me for not fitting this a little tighter. It is too hot to wear this robe at the moment. I accidentally made the pockets too small to actually use, so I went through all that trouble to add them and I'm not even able to use them. But look, look, they're nicely hidden in there. <laughs> if I were to change this, obviously I would learn how to do the pleating, the Fortuny style pleating, and make this very, very luxe. I'm very happy with the robe. I need to fix some stuff with the hem because it got I cut the lining weird. I don't know. Some stuff happened. Basic easy stuff that if I was paying more attention and wasn't rushing on, I wouldn't have had happened. So that's also on me. But again, favorite thing I've ever sewn myself. I don't know if I've ever felt as like, I don't know, there's like a feeling you get when you put on a, a, a thing that you really love. It's hard to explain. It's not like enthusiasm. It's, I don't know, it just kind of feels magical, you know? Uh, let me know if you have a similar experience, if you put on like a costume or you, you've put on a piece of clothing that you just feel really great in and it, it makes you feel these weird, I don't know, hard to explain feelings. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. I hope to, in the future, make more of Edith's beautiful clothing. Thank you for watching. My name is Quinn. You could also call me Queenie. It's up to you, I suppose. Whatever you feel like. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. I will try to leave links to useful stuff. I don't think they're still selling this pattern, but you probably can find it on eBay. I will write what pattern number it is below if you are curious about that as well. See you next time. I promise next time will not be a sewing video. Got a little sewing heavy this month. Even I didn't want to be sewing this much this month. Oh well. <laughs> Bye.